Hello. In this video, I'd like to talk about the new version of Spectrum Protect Plus that we are, we've just released as of this recording, and that is version 10.1.11. For those of you who are users of the product, you know that Spectrum Protect Plus can be run on all virtual appliances or a combination of virtual appliances and physical servers for the vSnap. Now, the earlier versions of the product used CentOS 7.x as an operating system for the virtual appliances. But what has happened is that operating system has stopped inherited, inheriting fixes from Red Hat, and thus it's, it's not being patched anymore. And Red Hat is instead focusing on Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 8 for all of the fixes that they are releasing. And so as a consequence of this, for security reasons, we have changed the operating system for the virtual appliances in Spectrum Protect Plus to RHEL version 8.x. Now, from a upgrade or a migration perspective, there are some consequences of this for our users. Uh, and the first is licensing of RHEL 8. So beginning with 10.1.11, the OVAs or the virtual appliances distributed by IBM with Spectrum Protect Plus will include a license for Red Hat version 8. And support for that operating system and upgrades for it will be provided by IBM. Now, if you did have some physical infrastructure in your environment and were running vSnap vSnaps on that physical uh, infrastructure, then of course your licensing would not change. You should have had a license from Red Hat to run uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, that will continue as is, and your OS support will be provided by Red Hat. Now, there are some additional consequences as far as how the upgrade or migration uh, goes for this switch to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. SPP, or Spectrum Protect Plus, runs as a set of containers. And if you're running in that environment, this does not affect you. You're going to just go ahead and upgrade in place as you usually do, and there's not any special processes that are needed. But if you're running the virtual appliance that used to be running CentOS 7, we're not able to provide an in-place upgrade from the old appliance. So what you're going to have to do is deploy a new Spectrum Protect Plus appliance, either vSnap or SPP server, and then either move the disks to that new appliance if it's a vSnap, or migrate the catalog to that new appliance if it's the Spectrum Protect Plus server. Now, if you are, however, using a physical server, then if you're currently running Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, uh, you're good. There's no changes necessary. You're really going to upgrade in place using uh, the installer that's delivered on Fix Central from IBM. And if, however, you are running a version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux that is not 8.x or a version of CentOS which used to be supported then as a physical server there is going to be no in-place upgrade and you must install rail 8 and do this migration of the configuration and disks just as if you're doing just as if you're running the appliance
So for VADP proxies, uh, all the operating systems that were previously supported continued to be supported in 10.1.11. If you're run a, running a standalone VADP proxy, then there's really no change needed, and the proxy will be auto-upgraded when SPP is upgraded. And if you're running a vSnap server or your proxy on a vSnap server, uh, if the vSnap is upgraded in place, the proxy will be auto-upgraded as usual. And if the vSnap server is migrated, then basically you're just going to reinstall from the Spectrum Protect Plus server after the upgrade. Now, in terms of planning, uh, these upgrades and migrations are going to require some downtime because you're going to have to pause the schedules and move the disks on your vSnap. So from a planning perspective, we are recommending that you kind of do this in a gradual rolling manner, maybe doing one vSnap at a time, and finally doing the Spectrum Protect Plus uh, server. While you're doing this, if it takes more than one change control to do, uh, your regular jobs can continue to run and you can continue to do your backups and uh, your environment can continue to work. Now from a planning perspective and a support perspective, and this is gonna be very important, we do recommend that you upgrade all of the vSnap servers to 10.1.11 and then as the final step only upgrade the Spectrum Protect Plus server. This is some information on the minimum levels before the migration. Uh, in our traditional manner we're supporting two versions back so you should be running 10.1.9 or 10.1.10 .10 on your SPP servers and your vSnap servers. Personally, my thinking is, and recommendation would be, go to 10.1.10 iFix2 on these appliances if you're running them. Uh, that should be a relatively easy upgrade, and it's a good place to start with the latest and greatest that's available pre-10.1.11. Now, there are some detailed tech notes about the upgrade and the migration that are available for you to look at. You see the titles of them over here. Uh, this overview and planning information, a detailed tech note on the vSnap migration, and a detailed tech note on the Spectrum Protect Plus migration. Before you begin this process, I would recommend that you go out there and read these tech notes in detail. They're gonna kinda give you all of the various different cases, different hardware supports, different configurations that you can go through when doing this upgrade. Because depending on how, component, how your components laid out, uh, you might have some different things to contend with from a, from a disk migration perspective, from a VADP migration perspective, and from a security perspective. As a kind of guide, what I've done is I've released three videos on doing this, so just to, so you can see it done. The first one is this overview video, and then I did a detailed video on a vSnap migration and a detailed video on an SPP server migration. I didn't do the most difficult cases, but I did do a basic configuration for both the vSnap and the SPP server. So you can kind of get the flavor of how it's done. And I would strongly encourage you watch those videos as you proceed with this upgrade and migration process. So that's the overview. Go out and watch the vSnap migration process and the SPP migration process videos just to kind of get a flavor for it. And I hope to see you soon on another video for Spectrum Protect or Spectrum Protect Plus.